I know this session was listed as the social media to do while you're pitching for funding. But I had a couple of conversations with some of you this week, and I realized that we that there's a huge gap in what I'm going to call cold calling. Now, every time you reach out for funding or to introduce yourself to a casting director or for anything where you're pitching what you're selling. So it's either yourself or your or your film or your product or your service or whatever. It's what I call a warm call or a cold call. And I'm going to take the first part of this before we even talk about social media, because what I realized, and I spoke to four people this week who reached out to me after last week's call, and I'm like, people don't get it. You know, I'm going to start with a very cruel truth, okay? Put on your big girl pants, because this is where we are here. The cruel truth is nobody cares about you. They care about themselves. Now, Kara's laughing because she's heard me say that before. I try to say it with a smile on my face. It still doesn't make it any more palatable, but it's the truth. Trust me, no one cares about you. They care about themselves. The second thing is they want to know that you're not just canvassing as if you're going door to door to say, don't forget to vote in November. <clears throat> they want to know that you're in front of them because you have a reason to be there that makes sense. So what does that mean? That means that when you're cold or warm calling, meaning let's say, um, let's say Joanne, Joanne and I are both writers and we're both working on written products now. And let's say I said to Joanne, Joanne, I happen to know this producer, the, the screenplay you're writing is perfect for her. I'm gonna make an introduction. Then I send this nice email, Joanne and I work together, women in film, you know, she's got something she'd like to talk to you about. You know, if you could take a few moments, I'd be grateful. Okay, that's a great warm call. The first thing Joanne needs to do is to show that person two things. She is a mirror of them, meaning when they look at her, they can see something of themselves. And secondly, she needs to show them that she's also a window into that which they aspire to be. So if I'm a producer, if I'm introducing her to a producer, <clears throat> she wants to know that Joanne sees her and knows exactly who she is and why she's putting it in front of her. She needs to know that, which means Joanne can't just say, oh, thanks so much. Do you have any time tomorrow? 15 minutes. No, you're not there to give your pitch. That's not, if you can't take the extra four hours and I put that number on it lightly, sometimes I've spent more time researching that person that you now have a warm lead to or, or a cold call lead. Now, Sharon, who's not on this call, I don't know if she's coming today or not. Oh, there she is. Hi. I am. Hi. She's reached out on LinkedIn and said, hey, I, you know, you did this great film. I'm working on a film of, you know, similar, I, you know, can you take a moment to speak with me? Okay. She and I, she's learned that cold hard truth. Nobody cares about you, Sharon. They care about themselves. She learned it. She did her homework and she knew exactly why that film mirrored her own film. And she knew exactly why her film could be an aspiration into their desire to do another film. So she, she, can, she knew going in what they were gonna wanna hear. So what's the first thing that she did? The first page of your presentation should be customized to the person you're pitching, warm or cold. You've done these four films. Let me tell you the three things I loved about them. Let me tell you why it's so exciting to have 15 minutes of your time, because I think you understand or you can help me deliver what I need to deliver, and here's where I am. In other words, I, you have made a connection. Now, I get paid you know, a pretty fair amount for my time. Depending on who I'm consulting for, it goes anywhere from $250 an hour to $1,500 an hour. Now, the $1,500 an hour people are few and far between, but it's like, fuck it. If you, you know, no offense, you know, that's what you should be paying. So that's what you're going to pay, you know. But at the same time, when someone reaches out to me, having given me both a mirror of myself and a window into that which I aspire to be, I'll give them a half hour. What I won't do is give them an hour. What I won't do is if they're not prepared, waste my time on the conversation. So 
I, I, I feel like you guys have got to understand that the way in the door is not about you. It's not about the film you want to make or the part you think you deserve or any of those things. It is about them. You know, do they have a boatload of money? Are they funding women's projects? What do they care about? And that opening customized pitch has to start with what they care about. I know that you've spent the last 20 years on women's issues around film. I know you've spent the last 20 years on entrepreneurial women launching new products without a lot of money in the bank. <clears throat> when people approach me that way, when they've done their homework properly, they know that I've sat on three boards of directors around trafficked women. So when they take a minute and send me an email saying, look, I know you work with trafficked women. Um, I My screenplay is about trafficked women. Can you give me 10 minutes? I'm all ears. Not only that, I'll read it. You know, I'm passionate. I care. Okay. So what you've got to start with is it's not an easy, oh God, I got 16 places I get to go. No, you don't go in and pitch your product, service, or idea. You go in and you pitch theirs. Because if you know what theirs is, then they're going to be interested in yours. Now, I've seen a lot of people actually on this screen who do the opposite. Like when they arrive here, you know, they will start pitching in their question. It's like, do you have a question? Really? We have a half an hour. I, I value your time as much as my own. I don't see a question in your the 30 seconds I already gave you. Usually I'll cut them off. I try to do it politely, but as I'm aging, I'm really not interested in politeness anymore. So I mean I do my best. And by the way, I'm not, you know, I'm not palatable to everybody, but I'll live with that. So the point that I'm making to you is you may be missing out on some really good opportunities because you're not understanding what you need to do once you're in front of them at the table. You go to a film festival, you do your friggin' homework before you get there. Who's going to be there? What do they care about? What films are there that mirror your own or a window into that which you aspire to be or their film is a window into what you aspire to be? Which of those films are those? <clears throat> wherever you go on this call tonight, if you're not looking up every single person who's on the call, because every, every week it's different, and you're not seeing if there's anybody who's a mirror of yourself or a window into that which you aspire to be, you're not doing your homework. I'm not that interesting that you have to pay attention that closely. And secondly, you also can watch it again later if you need to. So, all right. The second thing is what your persona has to be, has to mirror that which you're trying to present. So look at the background that you have on your, in, your, in, your, in your Zoom call. Does this background that are, all of you are showing mirror the presentation you want to make? You know, if you're in directing, is your lighting right? <laughs> No offense, but I can't tell you how many times, and I've been on a lot of calls where somebody will get off the call and somebody's like, do they have any idea what was going on behind them? I'm like, I, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't help you. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it matters. Every time you present yourself, you're possibly missing an opportunity to further that which you're trying to, to present. Okay. So I wanted to start with, and I hope that's helpful, and I want you to know it comes from my best intention where every single person here, I want them to get whatever it is you're aspiring, aspiring to be. And what makes me sad sometimes is sometimes I don't think it's because the talent isn't in the window. I think it's a lot of times because you just don't know how people think and how they work and what they care about. Now, Oprah did, um, I think it's like, Okay, it's either 60,000 or 6,000 or 600. I don't know, there's a six in there somewhere. But she did zillions of interviews. And I've said this before. She points out at the end of every single interview, and she goes from Beyonce to Barack Obama, when the camera starts rolling, they turn to her and say, how did I do? It doesn't matter how successful you are. You still care about wanting to be seen, heard and appreciated. So a handwritten thank you note is the least you can do for somebody who gave a half an hour of their valuable time. Even if there's no future, you don't think. 
Because that's the other thing. You do these soft calls, these cold calls, these calls. You set up a database, you guys. You set up a database in constantcontact.com, which is going to cost you $20 a month. It's the most important thing you'll ever do. Every contact, including me, you put in there. You put in their email address. You put in the last time you spoke to them. You put in your notes because you're going to go back at some point. And you're going to say, you might not remember me, you know, for the people who were in the contact a year ago. You may decide in February, you're going to start contacting every person you spoke to a year ago. And you're going to say, you may not remember me. We spoke, a, you know, we spoke last February, but I just want to give you an update on where I am. And I want you to know that I was really grateful for the time you spent. And, you know, I want, perhaps you might want to know these two new things. Nobody's going to be upset that you did that. But God is in the details, your future's in the details. Your future's in the details of the people, the posse you're setting up around you and at your watering hole. And so if you want to win, that's what you have to do. You have to, you know, you have to be able to say to yourself, this person's time is more than valuable. It's much more than I even realized. Okay, the second thing is not only how you present yourself physically, et cetera, but how you present yourself in social media, which was the whole point of this afternoon's conversation. But I wanted to start with that. Does anybody have any questions or you can yell at me or do whatever you want? Is there anybody who wants to ask anything about that? Because I'm telling you, in all four conversations I had this week, every it came up every single time. I'm like, what do you mean? You've sent a cold email and you've got to call with them tomorrow and you haven't sent them anything. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had to email somebody, well, Okay, maybe I don't email them, but somebody from my office emails them three hours beforehand and says, is there anything you want Christine to review before you get on the call? She has 15 minutes. Like, fuck it. Do I have to teach you this? You know, <clears throat> so I know they were like, oh, no, I didn't send anything. I just thought I'd pitch them. Well, what do you know about them? Did you Google them? Did you go look at all their social media? Did you go to their LinkedIn account and looked at more than their heading? Did you look at everything they've liked, the comments that they've made on other people's LinkedIn? Do you know this person? If you went to dinner with them, would you have five questions you, you could ask them that are about them, not about you? You know, again, it's so important to do the due diligence beforehand. It It's funny because the difference between getting funded or hired or anything else is very rarely based on talent or, you know, I mean, you, you know, you could have three great um screenwriters and the one you're going to hire is much more than the actual screenplay that they put in front of you it's just going to be more than that and so what you want to do is recognize how do i stand out not just with the work i'm doing which by the way must be exceptional and that presentation which we went over the last two weeks has to be exceptional but you have to be exceptional and they have to like you and they have to see themselves in you. So if anybody has any que questions, now would be a good time to ask. Um, anybody? Kara. Love this mirror idea or, or expression, um, but a little clarity. Show how they're a mirror of us, because I know it's about them, So or how we're want to, we at, want to mirror. When, when they look at you, they need to see a mirror of themselves. Okay. So whatever the common denominator you've been able to find in your research, that's the mirror you begin with. Oh my God, we both have kids applying to colleges this year. Yeah. How's it going? You know, that's the mirror. That's the thing that says, I understand your life. It doesn't okay. have to be about what you're pitching, you know, but you have to do the homework to know what that mirror is. And then the window into which they aspire to be. Okay, let's say you're going to meet with Spielberg, because why not say that? <laughs> or Reese Witherspoon, let's pick a woman. Okay, me, Reese Witherspoon is not going to be seeing in you a window into that which she aspires to be. Okay, no offense, none taken. All right, but then you have to tell her that she's the, the, win, uh, the window into which you aspire to be. You know, I, I, I followed your career from very early on when you were where I am. You know, I read that you made these statements. You know, I just want you to know it's been really helpful to me in keeping going when it's been a tough time. That she's gonna like, she's gonna feel it, she's gonna wanna, she's gonna wanna respond to it. So that's pretty much where that is. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. 
Is IMDB account important? I don't really know. But it is my belief that there's nothing in it. Then it would, you know, I'm not necessarily sure you should do it. But if you have something to put in it, then I think it's great to have it. But that's not what they're going to look at. They're going to look at, well, that's what we're going to talk about next, which is, okay, so here you are. Okay, if you could mute yourself again. Oh, you did. Okay, thanks, Kara. Okay, so we're going to move on now. Um, I don't know about IMDb. I do think you should have an account everywhere. But if you're in IMDb, then start participating in there. <laughs> you know, And make sure that you go look at their IMDb and maybe even comment. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, again, it's not about you. It's about them. So make sure that you're participating in the way that you, you want to be seen. Okay, so now you've got all these people you want to be pitching to. You're looking for leads in. You're reaching out after you've done the due diligence properly saying, can you give me 15 minutes of your time? I am not at your level, but God, I'd appreciate it. I promise I won't waste a moment. That's a heartfelt thing that nobody's going to turn you away unless they're just too, you know, we're, I mean, I don't know the Reese would respond to that, but I would certainly respond to that. Okay, so, all right, then it's like, what is your presentation to the world? Now, one of the things I have seen happening and um, that I think you have to be careful of is putting your heart on your sleeve and your social media. Now, Karen and I have had this conversation actually, and I told her, nobody wants to hear what's not working for you, Kara when they're looking at you to see if they want to give you millions of dollars for your friggin' film. They don't want to know it because it just makes it look like it's unhinging you. And so whatever your public persona is on your social media is what they're going to see. And I promise you, it's going to bias them one way or another. Now, so then I can hear you saying, oh God, we got to put all this positive stuff. That's bullshit too. There's a difference between being authentic and you know, you know, excited to start the early stages, sitting here with a spreadsheet of 50 people I am reaching out to contact because we are ready to get the funding we need to, you know, that's an authentic moment. And it also says I'm, I'm doing the due diligence, et cetera. And then you can even add to that the films about this. If you know anybody who might find it of interest, you know, please DM me. Okay, that, that's not saying I'm already where I want to go. That's showing that you're at the early stages of this. And it's positive. But it's not like, gosh, got my fifth ridge. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I see that up there. And I want to DM them and say, take it down, take it down, take it down, delete, 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 delete. Okay, I don't want to know your bad news. Because again, I don't care about you. I care about me. And what I want is somebody who is not going to share every terrible moment. Or if I was bitchy on a call, is not going to tell anybody. Like, I don't need your laundry aired in my social media. What I do need is to go to your social media and constantly be shown what's coming next. So let's say you're launching a new product. We're working with a woman who's launching a new product, which is um, skincare for the face. And she's tired of there being 16 things you have to buy from each producer of skincare. Um, I've given up, but whatever. Um, she doesn't want that anymore. She, this, she's going to be producing three. You buy these three products. That's all she offers. That's all there is. It works. And by the way, her skin looks fabulous. Okay. What we're putting up is like yesterday, there's a lot of snow here. So she made a small snowman outside. And I actually went outside. She's my neighbor. I went outside and I videoed her making this small snowman and her face is like shiny and red. And, you know, I'm sitting here behind, you know, a million layers of, I don't even know what. And she's talking about what cold does to the skin. And how when she comes in from the cold, she, plat, you know, puts lukewarm water on her face. And then she puts the after cream. It was so fun. It was cute. Product's not available yet. But that's a great product. It sells the product. But the product's not even on the market yet, but she's telling the story of the product. So you're funding a film. Maybe you put the description of the protagonist up and say, look, in my mind's eye, it's the following three actors that can play that role. Um, who would you pick with the, for the following attributes? And then ask your friends to go in and participate so it doesn't look like you're a loser or nobody's paying attention to 
again, you've got to create an environment in your social media that says people are enjoying what I'm presenting and how, because we're all creative, if not, you know, if nothing else, we've got to be creative along the way. So your social media, as you're out pitching, can recognize that you're out pitching. It could thank somebody for their time and say, you know, with that, you know, you could you could go on and say, look, the three things I learned on this call with Christine Mercer, and you link to her, and there's three bullet points of what that call with her provided you. She, you know, I, I don't know how to say thank you, and maybe this doesn't because now a million people are going to get in touch. But what a wealth of information! It's wonderful when women help women. <clears throat> That's a good LinkedIn connection. That says to me, that person pays attention to who helped her and who didn't. She pays attention to the budget. She pays attention to, you know, and then, or you could be up there going, you know, putting together final budget for our production. Um, I can't tell you how many line items we're reviewing yet again. It's all exciting. You know, like, you know, you want them to know you're constantly working and moving forward. You don't want to stagnate. And the way to not stagnate is to make sure you're not doing too many social media items at once. If you're anybody but an actor in the film industry, or if you're in a service or product company, because this video goes to more than just the film industry, you need a LinkedIn account. To be taken seriously, to be offered money, to be paid attention to, you need that LinkedIn account. And on that LinkedIn account, you're going to be putting corporate and business-like stuff up there. It's not a place for pretty images or videos. Instagram, I think, in certain industries, is the next best. We've played a lot. The last six months, we brought a lot of people in to work on TikTok and stuff for Blue Shoe. I'm not feeling it. I think it's very much, an, a, you know, an early, it's also very early, but <clears throat> I think it's like 18 to 30. And if you're an influencer, you can sell products on there. But frankly, I don't think it's worth your time. However, you can have an account and follow a bunch of people. And everybody you're researching that you want to be pitching to, you can follow them. Following and participating in their social media is exactly what we're talking about. No one cares about you. They care about themselves. So if you're participating in their social media and they see that, they're going to be more likely to take your meeting. So make sure, and you can't do it five minutes before the meeting with the person. How many times have I been going to a meeting that somebody asked me to do for them and 10 minutes before the meeting all of a sudden I get a LinkedIn invite I'm like delete you know you didn't do your homework you know so it matters people pay attention to those details so the social media that you're doing along the way must reflect a knowledge of what you're doing and excitement for what you're doing and excitement for the people who are coming in to discuss with you what you're doing and that social media has to have engagement and you have to have it in large group. If you only have 50 people following you, no one's going to give you $5 million. They're just not. There's not. They don't think you have a big enough foundation to be able to invest that way in. So the other thing is what we're finding out more and more is when are you doing like, should every film have its own Instagram page or should the production company have an Instagram page <coughs> and all the films for that um, production company are in there <laughs> and that I don't have clear answers for that stuff yet I can tell you this don't commingle don't show me your children on a page where you're going to be using it to present your product service or 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 what you're doing don't do it you, you've got to keep them separate um Especially because nobody wants to know how busy you are at home. It's a sad out, you know, sad part of life. Um, a sad part of life. Now, and the other thing is, I want to give you a presentation of something. I was on a call with a very famous uh, woman poker player. <laughs> Get this. I'm, I'm putting this out there because whatever you think the perception is, it's not that. So she's with a bunch of very high level sponsors in poker, right? And the first question she's asked is, is your, and, and she, by the way, is a professional poker player that supports her family with her poker winnings. Her husband stays at home with the kids. And the guy says, the, the, the sponsor says, is your husband wealthy? She goes, no. 
And he goes, well, how do you afford to do this? And she said, well, my winnings last year were $2 million. And he was shocked. But everybody else who he was seeing that day had winnings in that arena. It was just because she was a she. Okay, the next thing somebody asked her was, um, are you in um, Gambler Anonymous? She said, no, why would I be in Gambler Anonymous? And she couldn't help but then say, did you ask the question of the other men who came in here before me or coming after me? And the truth was, they didn't. But she also looks very sexy, hot, you know, she's edgy. She's not like, she doesn't look like a nerd that runs the numbers. Let's put it that way. I started an organization called Women in Backgammon. I'm a backgammon player. And what I, what we were talking about, she and I were on this call and we were talking about how the perception of how she thought she was presenting herself to them was totally alien to how they were receiving it. They just thought she was a hottie who probably slept her way to the tables. Okay. And they also were thinking, can she sell my product? So ask yourself again, I wanted to leave you with, during this time when you're raising money, selling yourself, trying to get jobs, whatever, ask yourself how they're perceiving you. And the way to do it is to go to five people in your posse or at your watering hole. And if you haven't learned about your watering hole, please watch some of our past videos to figure it out. And say to them, if I walk in the room, what do you think the perception of me is? Or would you mind sending my picture or this video to five of your friends who don't know me and ask them, what do you, th what do you think about this person? Find out if the perception you believe you're giving is the one that's actually being received. And if it's not, you got to change it. You know, one of the things her takeaway was she just has to change the way she presents herself for a while. So. Um, anyway, that's it. Um, okay, I just want you to let you know that I actually made some of my best connections when I posted my directing reel on LinkedIn. Some video for LinkedIn. Oh, no, a directing reel on LinkedIn is very good, but I consider that to be business. You know, I don't, I, you know, I think you, I think, by the way, Video on LinkedIn is now LinkedIn's treating it very differently and they're giving it a lot of exposure. So that's all really good. You should do video. Whatever you should, should be at the top of the line. We dealt with that in the last meeting. I wasn't saying don't put a video on LinkedIn. What I was saying is that's not where you put a pretty picture of you behind the scenes. It's where you, but a video of your work, that's, I'm all in. So please, I, you know, thank you for helping me clarify that, Jennifer, because I couldn't agree more. Um, Okay, Sharon says IMDB is worth it, so you can take her invite there. Okay, we're out of time. Does anybody have any last minute questions or anything? Okay, I hope this was helpful. We've got next week as our last one. Um, I just want you to know that the difference in success and failure is really in the details. I mean, it's so silly because that's what we've been taught our whole lives, but it's so friggin' true. And what I see in the women around me is we just don't know what those details were. So if you can clarify them, we're happy to provide them. So good luck to all of you. Christine. Yes. Let me, let me put my two cents in to help. I have a, I have a different sort of feeling on IMDb. I, I would at least invest in IMDb Pro if people want to, because you can really get in there and find out, you know, someone's rep, which if it's CAA, it's really hard to, to, bother them anyway but if they're with a management company that's not as well known you there's an in if there's someone's email address with a less known management company there's a window there so i don't know if it's 50 or 150 i can't remember what imdb pro is but there's way more access i 100 so percent a... agree with you and sometimes they're private emails of a producer that has produced something that you that aligns with your film is right there on imdb pro that's why I said I don't really know. But again, mm -hmm. if you're going to do it, it's to look people up and to do the research around them. So that's three people who are agreeing. Everybody's nodding. So get right on it. IMDb Pro right away. Um, all right. We'll hope to see you all next week. Thank you so much for coming and good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Christine.